Just a minute. Are you members? No, we've come to meet a pal of mine, Dave Robinson. Mr. Robinson, yes. Oh, yes, I'll be telling you. Hey, kid. Watch it, Dave. Come on. Uh, Mr. Robinson, guess half a crown each. Oh, right, Sam. Don't look so worried. Yeah, I'll get yourself a drink. Come on in, kid. See how the idle rich live. So, here, Ducks, have that one on me. You know, I'll only be able to stay a minute, Dave. You still in that corny musical comedy? Be coming off Saturday. Hear my special speech, Charlie. And what happens then? The big wedding scene? Well, oh, give us a chance, mate. What's the matter? You scared? Wasn't that way at the brook? <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> All right, keep the change. Still the same old Ted. I suppose you've got your military medal biting your nose down at the base. No line shooting, eh? Modest little violet. Believe you me, if I had one, I'd floodlight it. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky. That's what you think. Oh, well, you are now, anyway. Thanks for those few kind words, sir. You're not doing so bad for yourself, are you, chum? Well, you can't keep a good fiddler down, you know. Dave, why don't you get a job? I'm too busy. <laughs> Same old Dave. You will watch your step, won't you? Don't you worry about me, ducks. I always walk in the squares. Well, if you boys will excuse me. I've got to go. A girl must live. Right. Ferguson, Dave. What, and leave you, darling? No, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, why don't you marry this girl, then she could relax? Give us a chance, mate. We can't all be in the money. Why not? All right, suit yourself, but we'll make our pile a steady way. Well, it's a pity when I never to take you. Now, look, Ted, the way I feel... He's the biggest scrounger in the army, this last Jack, but you can't have <laughs> liking him. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute, Alice. Okay. Here, I'll tell you what. Let's go ice skating next week. Have a bit of supper or something. What do you say, Joy? Mmm, sounds fine. Yeah, lovely. You got your cab outside? Yeah, I was trying to help Joy at the theatre. And pick me up afterwards. I've trained him well. <laughs> Would you like to come back about nine and run me across the river? Yeah, sure. Thanks for the drink, Dave. Oh, uh, I think nothing of it. I'll have to make you two kids members. Bye. Cheerio, Dave. I'll pick you up at nine. Yeah, don't forget, I've got to see a man about a fortune. Hey, Ted. Yeah, where exactly do you want to get to, Dave? Marsh Road. Uh, I see five, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, do you want to do yourself a bit of good? All depends. Well, this thing I'm in now is money by jam. Yeah, what is it? Oh, listen, that nice connection, though. Everything the rich man wants and can't get. No checks, no questions, no coupons. And a very nice sideline in jewelry. Now, why don't you have a go? I could get you in. You and your cab would be very useful. Yeah. What about in Marsh Road, Dave? Well, drop me at the... No, anywhere at the top will do. You went away, Dave? No, I don't know how long I'll be. Oh, OK. What's on the clock? Forget that. That's on me. Think it over, Ted. One or two jobs for my bunch, and you and Joy would be able to retire for life. Besides, I'd like to have you around. No, not for me, thanks, Dave. Well, I could take you to see the boss now. It's only a couple of minutes away. No, honestly, Dave, really. All right, it's up to you. Go on, and have a drink with a change. Go on, it's on the Old Comrades Association. Okay. Down there. Yeah, so that one for me, too. I'll ring you Monday. Okay. So long, Sergeant. <laughs> Any sandwiches, please? Uh, any sandwiches, lady? Cheese? And I've got a sausage roll here that's aching to be eaten. Oh, last Tuesdays, I hope it'll do me. And a nice big shandy, too, please. Uh, lemon or ginger? Uh, lemonade, please. London bells 
bells and no bells ring, light four bells ring a ding dong. The sing song bow bells ring. Bow bells are happy bells, and when they ring to me, they bring a spring song, a ding dong kind of thing. There where the buses stop and cheerful sparrows hop, 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 my love, by those bells above is waiting, is waiting. Oh, bells, prepare to play a wedding peal for us one day, a ding-dong, unless my schemes go wrong, it won't be long. Hello, gorgeous. Say that for Tony. Well, remember, it's your loss. <laughs> Where is she? I don't know. I've got enough to worry about looking after little me. Oh, now, any time you want looking after. May I have the pleasure? Sorry. Well, you're a dance hostess, aren't you? So what? Well, this is an excuse me. I'm tired. You heard what the young lady said, didn't you? OK. Sorry I spoke. You see what I mean? Come on, those stuff, eh, then? No, I think it's the gypsy in me. Or is it the Irish? I'd say it was the Scotch. <laughs> Tommy. Ah, excuse me. Would you like this sort of job, Miss? I'd like it all right. Men didn't talk so much. Oh. Well, gorgeous. You can save that for Annette. Oh, she figured you'd prefer it. Huh. Tried it on Peggy. What's the matter, you're tired? That fella's feet. Gosh, you ought to use them for building roads. You need a rest, Tony. What do you say to a trip to Brighton? I'm just wanting to take girls to Brighton. What's so special about Brighton? I suppose Baker makes it Monte Carlo. Anywhere with Paul Baker is okay with me. You want your head examined? I have. I sent it back with a note saying, contents missing. Is Gregory in? I hear he's waiting for you. The way I figure it, he probably is. Uh -huh. Get out of it. Listen, Dave. I want to talk to you, give you a bit of advice. What's this, a lecture? Maybe. Dave, you talk too much. I suppose that's Baker's idea. Don't keep on about Baker. Or Gregory's, maybe. Listen, Dave. I think I'll go and have a talk with Mr. Gregory. Everything arranged for Friday? Yes, I'll have a final check-up with that fellow on the inside. Look, gee, Dave Robinson... Are you cleared about Friday's job, Pogson? Oh, I think so, Mr. Gregory. You? OK, with me, Mr. Gregory. All right. No slip-up, mine. Gee, Dave Robinson... My ears are burning something terrible. Come in, Dave. I'm in. You want to talk to Dave alone, gee? Yes, please, Paul. Does he use perfume? No, I don't think so. Well, he ought to. Ah, it's a prize giving, I see. Yes, Dave. And I see by your letter you want your share of the Ludgate Hill affair. It's a general idea. All right. Afraid it wasn't as good a proposition as we'd expected. Oh? How's that, Mr. Gregory? Oh, a lot of the stuff's phony. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Paper said it was a 50,000 quid job. Mm hmm. People who read newspapers aren't interested in anything under that amount. Now, your share, Dave, comes to 50 pounds exactly. 50 pounds? What do you think I am, a mug? That is a matter of opinion. A lot of the stuff isn't worth breaking up. I see that now. Seems a pity we went to all that trouble, doesn't it? It's a pity you hit that watchman so hard. I hear he has a fractured skull. Ah, don't give me that. I know what I did. You're inclined to allow your enthusiasm to run away with you, Dave. Fifty pounds exactly. That's no good to me, and you know it. I don't take chances for that sort of money. I'm sorry, Dave. Take it or leave it. There are others besides you in this, you know. Oh, no, I know it. What about him? All he had to do was to walk in and help himself after I'd opened the place up. Is his cut the same as mine? That's my business. Don't come so close to me. I'm a little fastidious. Is that so? I'll come as close to you as I like. I'm not too close, if you don't mind. Well, well. What do you think you're going to do with that thing? It's for you to do the thinking, Dave. You wouldn't, you know. 
You ain't got the guts. I'll show you if you come here. Stop it. Stop it. Well, as I'm working over time, I might as well be paid for it. Oh! oh. Bigger? Nasty night? Yes. Just came out for a minute. Gets warm inside. <laughs> Must do. It's stuffy, I'd say. Yeah. Cigarette? Oh, no, sir. Not when I'm on duty, thank you. Oh, of course not. Suppose I'd better get back. Very good, sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Baker. Fine. Here he is, miss, right on the dot. OK, Joyce. Good night. Bye. Trust him. I think they taught him that habit in the army. Hey, we'll go straight home now. We got out to supper. I've had a stroke of luck. Oh, oh it's all right. I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Come on. Yeah. Good night, Pop. Good night to you both. How did this happen? I wish I knew. Yep. All right, then don't crowd around now. Come on, keep back. I want to use a phone, please. Good one. Hey, there's one of my books. Oh, oh, clear, please. Make way, please. Make way, get way, get way. Come on, Ryan. Right. Come on, Ryan. Right. Right. Why do people have to get murdered when I'm out with my wife for the first time for years? Spite size, I shouldn't wonder. Benson back yet? No, sir, but he won't be long. Will you see the taxi driver now? Yes, and I'll see the girl at the same time. Oh, very good, sir. Chair, please. Come in, you two. Sorry for the delay, but there are usually one or two things to do when it's a murder job, you know. Well, I've read your statements, and there are one or two points on which I think you might be able to help. All right, sit down. You and Robinson were friends, weren't you? Yes, sir, we were kids together. We lived in the same street, all three of us. Wilson Street, Camelwell Green. Yes, sir. Joined up together, didn't you? They volunteered. When did you last see Robinson? Tonight, sir, we met him for a drink at the Pelican Club off Shaftesbury Avenue. He was a member. Drinks are pretty expensive there. He must have been in the money. Dave was never hard up. Well, he could think of more ways to earn a couple of bob than... Civvy Street seems pretty strange to some of the boys. Yes, and when they come out, they, they don't know what to do. And... Well, well, sir, it, it isn't only that. Well, 
The job you did before the war seems so small after six years. Besides, it, it costs so much more to live now. And Robinson couldn't wait to save the hard way, eh? No, sir. Whatever old Dave wanted, he had to have, and he usually got it, too. Quite. Robinson didn't show you or offer you any of these at the Pelican Club, did he? No, sir. Peters, did you turn in your revolver when you were mob? Yes, sir. Good. It's a pity all the boys didn't do that. It would have saved them a lot of trouble. And us. Did Robinson have a gun, Peters? I, I don't know, sir. Oh, come on now. You and he were friends. Who else did he run around with? I, I can't say, sir. Did you and Robinson quarrel this evening? Quarrel, sir, us? Blimey, no. That'll be Benson, sir. Come in. Well, Benson. Not much, sir. Detective Sergeant Benson's been over your pal's rooms. Oh, I see. Anyone you know? No. Tony, it's a new one on me, sir. Dave never took out the same girl twice. Know what that is, Peters? Well, it's isn't a toothpick. It's what we call a jemmy. Anything known? Fits the marks and that luck at Hill job, sir. I got that stain analyzed. Right. Anything else? Uh, yes, one thing, Watson. So Robinson did have a gun, eh, hey, Peters? Yes, sir, seems as if he did. Golly, Ted, we've never been as late as this before. No. I'll have your old man after me. It's all right? Hmm, a bit. Been a bit grim. Yeah. Poor old Dave. Ted, you're not going to get mixed up in this, are you? Don't be silly. I know you. You can't kid me. Leave it alone, Ted, please. Let the police work it out. Of course I will. What's the matter, honey? Well, we can't afford to get into any trouble. Who's going to get into any trouble? I've got my living to earn. <laughs> Good morning, you mean, darling. <laughs> no, no. Very obliging of Dave to take his body to the other side of town. Save a lot of trouble, won't it? I wouldn't be too sure of that. I can't hang anything on us. You, you mean, keep me out of this. Dead men can't talk. That's a popular theory, Paul, but history hasn't always borne it out. We don't know when he died. He died in the taxi. Yes, but I say we don't know when he died. We don't know whether he talked before he died. To that taxi driver. They didn't talk. Sure. If that taxi driver had known what he got in the back of the cab, wouldn't he have gone to a hospital? Wouldn't he have called the police? Don't be silly. I always try not to be silly. If that taxi driver knew anything, we wouldn't be here now. We'd be inside. It wouldn't take the police long to pick us up. I think you've got something there. What are you worrying about? I tell you, there's nothing they can get on us. You know, sooner or later, the police are going to take a look around Marsh Road. And when they do, they'll probably pay us a visit. Before they do, there are a couple of things I'd like to know. What? What the police said to the taxi driver. And whether they think he might have done it. Mr. Gregory's busy. It can't wait. Paul. Oh, what's the matter? It's, it's in the paper. Yeah, I know, we read them. Paul, I'm scared. Suppose they come around here asking me questions. But why you? You don't know anything. You just work here. I knew Dave. You just danced with Dave. Sure, that's right. For all you know, he was only one of the customers. Even if they get as far as this, there's nothing to suspect here. You don't know a thing about it, see? But Paul... Look, Tony, forget it. It's all right. What about Sunday, eh? Like a trip out? Yes, Paul. More than anything. We can go anywhere, you say. Nothing more for the time, is there, Chief? No, nothing more for the time. Come on, Tony, I'll buy you lunch. Well, 
Look, mate. So you picked in the paper, Ted? No. <laughs> no, I did. Give us a cup of tea and a piece of cake, else. Well, that's things. Not too good. I looked in at one or two agents, but nothing doing yet. Oh, well, never mind. Something will turn up soon. Righto, Ted. Oh, thank you. What a nasty experience. Yeah. Right. Had a good day? All right, you know. You know, I can't help feeling that old Dave wanted my help. He got into my cab and I'm sure it's because he wanted to tell me something. Ted, are you on the rank tonight? No, just cruising, huh? Ted, you're not going I'm just cruising, though. Find a bit of Gladys. Tough. You were in here last night, weren't you, about the same time? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I've never seen you here before. No, I don't come here often. Just got a job this way, that's all. Oh. Where'd you come from? Over the other side? Yeah, that's right, over the other side. Gladys? All right. Well, I don't think it's got a chance. No? Well, I do. I don't think you're taking into consideration the state of the ground. Well, if you ask me, I think she was pretty slippy at Chester. You cab drivers must be doing well these days. What? Well, you never get one this side for love or money. Can't you? I only drive for money myself. <laughs> oh, go on with you. Been in the army? Oh, bet you know. I knew a boy in the army once. Really? Small world, ain't it? What regiment were you in? Boy Scouts. Oh, go on. See you later. Okay, cheerio. You get some pretty swanky customers in here, don't you? How do you mean? The uh, bloke's just kind of, you know, they're filling the old doings, the old soup and fish. Oh, that. Oh, that's Mr. Baker, that is. He's ever so nice. Yeah, what's he do? Why, he's the MC over at the Palais. You know, makes the announcements. Always oh, a regular gentleman. Never a word out of place. Oh. Let it come along, dude. Can't call your soul your own. Let him wait. Tell him I'll see him in a few minutes. Listen, G, I've just been in the pub. I saw that taxi driver in there, the one who drove Dave Robinson. Did he see you? Yeah. Did you get the number of his cab? Never thought of it. Well, OK, it's not important. You better get back on the floor. I'll attend to this. Right. Tell Sniffy to come in here. Sniffy. Yes, Mr. Gregory? Come in, Sniffy. I've got a little job for you. That taxi driver, according to the papers, his name's Ted Peters. Ted Peters. Now, I want you to find out where he keeps his cab. Hello, Mr. Gregory. That's the place. That's all there was to it. Ted Peters? Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Peters? Yes, sir. I'm a police inspector, Mr. Peters. Just a little checkup, matter of routine, you know. Is this your cab? Yes, sir. Mind if I give it a look over? No, help yourself. Turn off for me, Bob, will you, please? Sir. They went over it pretty thoroughly at the yard, sir. Uh, yes, I know they did, but there are just one or two things I'd like to make sure of myself. Now, I, I take it that Robinson's body was found on the floor. 
Yes, I explained that. When I opened the door, it, it sort of slid out. Knocked me back a bit, because, well, you see, me and Dave have been pals since we was mm. kids. I told Inspector Carter. Oh, you did? Yes. Well, we needn't go into details. I just want to make certain of one or two things. Now, are you quite sure you noticed nothing unusual during the drive, like Robinson moving around or trying to attract attention? No, sir, nothing unusual at all. I told Inspector Carter I didn't hear a sound from inside the cab. Did Robinson ever discuss his business with you, how he got his money? Well, no, sir, not exactly. Although I did get the impression he was onto plenty of easy money. Well, did he ever mention any names or persons? No, sir. Have you any idea where he went after he paid you off? Well, that's the thing that worries me. If only I could be sure. You mean you think you have an idea? No, not really, but it was somewhere close by. Why do you say that? Well, he offered to take me there. Said it was only a couple of minutes away. I see. Did you tell Inspector Carter that? No, sir. Should I have? No. No, that isn't necessary now that you've told me. Well, thank you, Mr. Peters. Oh, that's okay, sir. Come here. Bye bye. Tarbo. Ted. Hi, Alice. Good night, Elsie. Good night, Elsie. Good night, Good night, You know, Joy, there's no need to come if you don't want to. Oh, I didn't say I didn't want to come. I only said I didn't like it. And I don't. I'm afraid you may be right. Well, then I think that's all the more reason that we ought to go. There was another cop up at the garage today. They're checking up, all right, but I don't think they're working fast enough. You know, I want to get in there and have a shifty for myself. You coming? Of course I'm coming. There's a girl. Good night, Pat. Cheers. seems to tell me this is the place that Dave came to. I can't get it out of my mind. But it looks like the kind of place Dave would have come to, I must say. Hello, Joy. Annette. Big world, isn't it? Well, what are you doing? Working here. Shall I see you after this dance? Yes. Where? Over at the bar. All right. Who's that? We were in the show together. Nice girl. Yeah. Shall I get her a drink? Yes, if you like. Light ale. Or at least she used to. Yes. Uh, two lights, please, and orange ale. Well, this is a surprise. I've been here six months. Nice work if you've got the constitution. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I've finished a show. Well, this is Ted, Ted Peters. Well, I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> you were in the army when Joy and I were together, weren't you? Yeah. Well, any news of another job? No, I suppose I'll have to start looking for one now. <laughs> Bit of a bad time, isn't it? Most of the shows are coming off. Mm. Oh, well, hope for the best. Well, that's yours. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, by special request, the boys will now give you a jam session. Jack. How about a waltz, Mr. Baker? You got your skates? Excuse me, will you? Uh, Paul, Paul Dyer. I want to talk to you. What's the matter? Come on upstairs. That taxi driver's just come in. Where? Over there. What's he doing here? Snooping. Staring at me as though he's seen me somewhere. Well, maybe he has. I've never seen him. He's a pal of Dave Robinson's. Yes, but that what? Oh. What? Maybe you've seen my photograph. What photograph? The one I gave Dave. A signed one was in his flat. Well, that's a crazy thing to do. How was I to know you were going Cap. to be? What are you saying? Oh, what do we do now? Better ask Gregory. Perhaps he'll know. Well, we'll see. <laughs> May I? Don't go, dear. No, all right. How about it? What? Well, Excuse I... me, Chuck. Come on, huh? Ted, Annette thinks it would be a good idea if I were to take a job here. You know, dance hostess. I said I thought you wouldn't like it. Well, I don't like it, but... 
all the same, I think it might be a very good idea. Why? Do you know I've just seen him? Tony. Who's that? You know that photograph that Inspector Carter showed us? It said, today with love from Tony. Well, she's here. Working here, I think, and she knows Baker. You mean that... I mean that I think we're probably onto something. If you took this job, you'd be here on the spot. You might be able to find out something to help the police. I don't like it, but... Would you be willing to take a chance? You bet I would. Come on. All I know is, gee, that I'd be a lot happier if that taxi driver were out of the way. Why not leave him to me? I haven't the slightest intention of leaving him to you. You've caused enough trouble already. Well, if he has recognized me, he can go straight to the police and tell them I'm here. What does all that add up to? All right, you knew Robinson. He was a client of yours. He was a bit sweet on you. He asked for a photograph and you gave him one. There's nothing unusual in that. You're very grieved about this. That taxi driver's our only danger. Why not let me handle him? No, let me. I've talked to him already. He's all right for a while. The way I'll handle him, you'll turn out a very great help. I don't get it. I don't expect you to. All in good time, dear Paul. And if you see Sniffy, you might tell him I have another little job for him. Come over tomorrow about half past three. I'll introduce you to Mr. Baker. Don't forget now. No, I won't. Thanks, Ellie. Oh, it'll be nice having you here. We'll take care of her. Thanks, I nearly lost her just now. <laughs> Not as bad as it seems. That's what she says. She's crazy. Fuck it, gang. We'll scare her. So long, mm -hmm. Annette. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Seems a nice kid. Yes, and she's mad about the boy. Yes, I think she's engaged. Look out, feet. Here they come. Come in. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Brown. Mr. Gregory's expecting me. It's the young lady I mentioned last night. She's here. Annette here, Mr. Gregory, to see Mr. Baker. She's with the young lady she spoke about. Thank you, sir. He's busy at the moment. He'll be out. He's ever so nice. I think you'll like him. Hope so. Mr. Baker, this is Miss Joy Goodall. How do you do, Miss Goodall? It's a pleasure. I'm sorry, the office is a bit cluttered up at the moment. We can talk out on the balcony. Miss Brown, will you have some tea sent up on the balcony, please? Yes, Mr. Baker. Okay, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Good luck, Joy. Thanks. So you think you'd like to take a job here, Miss Goodall? I think I'd love it. I'd certainly like you to join us. It's very difficult to get the right kind of girl, you know. Do I see the right kind of girl? You seem to me to have all the qualifications. I'm very fond of dancing. Have you done much ballroom? No, mostly stage, but I'm a good ballroom dancer. I'm not going to take your word for that. A dance after tea. Good. I suppose Annette's told you all about the conditions of working here, salary and so forth. Oh, yes. We've been into all the sordid details. You might find it a little strange at first, but I'm always here. Got any bricks to throw? Throw them at me. I have a feeling there'll be very few bricks, Mr. Baker. My friends call me Paul. Do they? Yes, Joy, they do. Okay. Paul. There was nothing to win Andy Wilson scored three when they was playing Chelsea. That wasn't against Chelsea, it was the Arsenal. You should know, Phil, that wasn't the Arsenal match. I remember it quite distinct. It rained for about an hour before the kick-off. No, Fred, have a bit of common. I mean, you are wet. Excuse me, you too. Yes, I'm afraid. Would you like to hear? Hello. Here we are. 
Come. Pull out of there. Okay. Look, I want to get back to the West End. All right with you? Sure. Good. Oh, and uh, I want you to give me a hand. I've got one or two packages to bring out. into it, haven't you, chum? Walked right into what? Come on, money. What's the idea? Don't be in a hurry, Peters. You'll find out. See this? What about it? This is the gun that killed your pal. There was only one shot fired. Now, the police are pretty good at matching the gun to the bullet. They're going to find this gun on you after we finish with you. Let's see that now. Yeah, they're going to find this too. Read it to him, Joe. Dear pal, I'm coming round on Thursday for my cat. And it had better be more than last time, or else you and me are going to have a few words. Here. Yeah. And it's signed Dave. It's a letter you wrote to a certain party. No names. So that certain party might quite well be you. They're going to find that on you too, Mr. Peters. Tucked away in your inside pocket. Go on, get moving. You've got it all thought out, haven't you? Yeah. We're going to do better than that too. Hear that? That's one of the boys. He's taking your cab away. I don't do anything silly. They're taking your cab and parking it near the place where they stole that black saloon. See the idea? You stole that black saloon, and you're going to be found in charge of it. And it's full of stolen liquor. Nice little setup, eh? You and Dave Robinson. Partners in war, partners in peace. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, chum? Yeah, pretty sure. The story will be that you and two others drove up here and broke into this place. Joe here, the night watchman's going to be terribly sorry he had to hit you so hard. Got your cush, Joe. Never go far with that, you get me. Sort me out, John. Get that car here, quick. I'll report back to the boss. No, sir, I can't say it's any of these fellas. The description you've given might fit dozens of people. This man you say was ringleader. Did you hear any of them call him by name? No, sir. You say you've been over that warehouse? Yes, sir. What about the watchman, this man called Joe? Well, the regular watchman's ill. This fellow's just taking his place. Nobody seems to know anything about him. And anyway, he's disappeared. They've all disappeared. Lock, stock and barrel. Thanks. Was everything in order at the warehouse? Yes, sir. All the stock? Yes, I went over everything with the manager. Oh, by the way, we picked up your taxi. It's outside. Oh, thanks, Sarge. Now, about that gun. I had no doubt it's the one that killed Robinson, but where does that get us? I mean, guns change hands so easily. Peters, did you get the impression that this man you drove to the warehouse was the chief? No, sir. I have a feeling he was obeying orders. So? Why? 
Well, I don't know, see. He was giving the orders all right, but I don't think he thought them out. No, uh, probably a stooge. That's just the trouble. The big boys keep undercover, but they're the ones that do all the mischief. Now, my advice to you, Peters, is to keep yourself out of trouble. They've got you marked down because they think you know too much. Well, I can't help picking up a fair, can I, sir? I'm not talking about that. And in this case, the fair picked you up because he knew who you were. How did he know that, I wonder? Well, I don't know. Because you get yourself in the limelight by snooping around Marsh Road. Now, what you tell me about the Palais de Dance, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Have you checked up on anybody there? No. Who, for instance? Well, you remember showing me the photograph of a girl called Tony? Dave Robinson's girlfriend? Yeah. Well, next time you're down the Palais, have a word with her. She's working there as a dance hostess, and now she's the MC's girl. Your job is driving a taxi, isn't it? Yes, sir. You know, if I were you, I'd stick to that. I'll give you a tip. Go home and stay home until this matter's cleared up. Good night. Good night, sir. He's amateur detective. He knows I'd laugh like a drain if he was right. Yeah. <laughs> I picked you for this job because I thought I could rely on you. You picked Joe because you thought you could rely on him. It seems that we were both wrong, doesn't it? Well, honest, Governor, I couldn't help it. He was as slippery as an eel. He seemed to have boots and fists all over him. I just couldn't help myself, and that's the truth. Why didn't you use your gun? I didn't have no orders to shoot, and you keep your mouth out of this. You ain't the boss. I wouldn't if I was you. Cut that out, both of you. Sniffy, it seems that you've had a piece of bad luck, and let's leave it at that. Paul, get Sid on the phone. London's a bit too hot for you at the moment, so I'm going to send you down to the farm where you'll have a nice rest and don't be to bother you. Peters is sure to go to the police about this, and, well, anyway, it'll be safer in the country. Sid, get that truck ready. I'm sending Sniffy down to the farm. Oh, yes, Mr. G. Shall I take Sam? All right. Okay. All right, Sniffy, get along, have a good time, and don't over-talk yourself. Thanks, Gov. And, uh, thanks again, Gov, for being such a sport. That's all right, Sniffy. Sid. I don't want Sniffy back. Right. Now you're talking. Hello, Timmy. Nice time you picked to go on your roll with you, I must say. Come on, kid, let's get out of it. I've got no time to waste. Let me hold it in. Well, I've been having. I've been your lordship, if you please. Busy, don't they? They certainly do. All the same, it's hardly a gold mine, is it? Hardly. Would you like to make some more money? I've got some nice connections. Silk stockings, things like that. Black market. It's all surplus stuff. We need people like you to deliver it and collect the money. Nice little rake off, too. Make yourself 20 pounds a week, easy. Mm, 20 pounds a week? Yeah, free of tax. Isn't it rather risky? I've heard they're tightening up all round. Oh, you don't want to believe all you read in the papers. You realize I'm trying to do you a good turn. Oh, yes, I appreciate that. Well, look, don't worry about it. Just think it over. Only, don't think out loud. Don't worry about that. I won't. Yes, Mr. Baker. What do you have? Oh, I'd like one of those, please. Two specials, please. You girls doing all right, isn't you, Tony? I wouldn't know. Ain't enough grand. What's the matter, Ducky? Jealous?
Colonel Ferguson. I'm Detective Sergeant Murray. Glad to see the manager. I'll find out if he's in, sir. Will you please wait? Sure. Mr. Gregory, two gentlemen to see you, sir. Detectives. Really? Hold on there a moment. I'll ring you back. Yes, Mr. Gregory? I have visitors. Warren Baker. Tell him and Tony to come to the upstairs cafe and wait there. I'll ring them if I need them. Yes, sir. Jim? Yes, sir? Okay, send them up. Gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Gregory, I'm sorry to disturb you. I'm Sergeant Murray and this is Detective Perkins. How do you do? Won't you sit down? No, thanks. Cigarette? No, thanks. We're just checking up on a few things concerning a certain inquiry. I believe you have a young woman working here by the name of Tony. Tony Masters? Oh, good Lord, yes. We've had her a long time. Nice girl. Very popular. Don't tell me she's been getting into mischief. Oh, good gracious, no. She may be able to help us, that's all. Oh, well, I'll send for her. Find Tony and tell her to come up here at once. Yes, sir. Tony, Mr. Gregory. You know, like most meek and mild men, I'm an inveterate reader of detective stories. I get quite a kick out of this sort of thing. <laughs> we get quite a kick out of coming here. We don't often get the luck to work in such pleasant surroundings, do we? Come in. Oh, come in, my dear. You want to see me, Mr. Gregory? Yes, sit down. These gentlemen are from the police. They want to ask you one or two questions. Me? I believe you have a friend named David Robinson. Friend? Yes. How well did you know him? Not very well. He was just one of the customers. Oh, you... you weren't engaged or anything like that? Me? Oh, certainly not. The reason I ask is because we found this photograph in Robinson's rooms. Oh, that. We give away a lot of those to the boys who come here dancing. Dance hostesses have their fans, you know. I'm sure Miss Masters has a lot of fans. Did you ever meet him apart from your professional duties here? Once or twice. You know how it is. He didn't mean anything in my life. You remember him coming here last Thursday? No. That was the night he was killed, you know. Killed? No, I... I don't know anything about that. Oh, then you... Uh, you don't read the papers. Then you don't remember him coming here. No. Do you think if he had come here, you'd have seen him? I should think so. So you're pretty sure he didn't come? Well, pretty sure. Yeah. I wonder if there's anyone who could refresh your memory. Who's in charge of the dance floor? The master of ceremonies, Mr. Baker. Well, do you think he'd come up a minute? Uh, certainly. Yes, sir? Right here, sir. I'll tell him. Mr. Gregory wants you, Mr. Baker. Would you like water or soda with us? Soda. I take it you've known your MC some time. Oh, yes. Baker's been with me even longer than Tony. He's very popular with the customers. He's almost as big a draw as the band. Really? 
You want me, G? Oh, come in, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Paul, these gentlemen are police officers. How do you do? Mr. Baker, I wonder if you can help us. You remember a young man named Dave Robinson? Dave Robinson? Yes, he used to frequent this hall. Oh, the boy was murdered. I knew him by sight, yes. You did? And you knew he was killed? Yes, I saw it in the paper. Killed in a taxi, wasn't he? Somewhere up west. Well, he was killed. Let's leave it at that. By all means, let's. Now, do you remember seeing him here last Thursday evening? No. No. Now, we feel pretty sure that the killing occurred between the times of 8.50 and 9.10 on Thursday evening. A space of 20 minutes. Seems fair enough. We also feel pretty sure that the killing happened in this district. Really? Now, we realize it's very difficult for people to remember what they were doing at a given time. Do you think so? I should have thought it would have been fairly easy. Oh, would you? Do you think you could prove what you were doing between the times of 8.50 and 9.10 on Thursday last? Of course, I was, um... Yes? Well, I must have been... Yes? Oh, it's ridiculous. See what I mean? Paul, don't be silly. Of course you remember. At least you ought to. I'll tell you where he was. He was at the bar giving me a telling off for having too much to drink and not getting on with my work. Johnny the Barmer will verify that. Uh, yes, that's right, Tony. I remember now. How could you be sure of the time? It's easy. It was just after the first spot dance. Well, it must have been a pretty good telling off. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, thanks for your help. That was a very interesting experience. Zealous types, these policemen. Nice work, Tony. Nice work, my foot. If you think I'm going to get dragged into this just to cover up for you, you're making a big mistake. From now on, you can think up your own alibis. Well, listen, sweetheart. And you can cut that out, too. I've been watching you and that baby-faced brat you've just hired. If you think you can two-time me, you're mistaken. Oh, come on, Tony. Oh, no, leave me alone. You'd better be very careful, Paul. She might be dangerous. I can handle her. You've got to somehow. <laughs> Excuse me, you can't sing. No, it's just the way I walk. You know the Scots, Johnny. I think you ought to. Oh, shut up, I know what I'm doing. You know Mr. Baker's orders. I don't give a hoot for Mr. Baker. Cheerio, Johnny. Yes, sir. Yes, right away. Now the boss is asking for me. Take my tip, go easy on that stuff. It's liable to bite. Come in. Johnny, I have a job for you on Friday night. Yes, Mr. Gregory? This time the rake off will be really worthwhile. It's taken a lot of planning and the deadline's Friday. After that, we'll take some time off. We should be able to afford to. Sounds fine, sir, but will it be all right with the cops so close to us? Oh, don't worry about that. That's just routine stuff. Johnny, where's Tony? Down at the bar, knocking him back. You'll have to watch that girl, Paul. Okay. Keep an eye on her, Johnny. I'll be down in a few minutes. Okay, here we go. 
go. Talking about me? No, of course not. Why should I? I didn't know whether you thought I was amusing. Why don't you give this place a miss? Come back again when you're a little older. Why? What do you mean? The atmosphere isn't healthy. That's about the straightest tip you'll ever get. You better take it. Tony, why don't you go home? You've had enough. I'm not interfering with you. Go look after your new girlfriend. She's glad enough for a little attention. Come on, Tony, have some sense. Stop begging on me. I've taken all I'm going to. I've known men who are worth a dozen of you. Even Dave Robinson. Shut up. Tony, I'm sorry. Tony. What are you doing here? I thought you were in bed asleep. I had to see you. Well, what's up? The police have been to the palace and questioned Tony and Baker. I don't know what they found out, but Ted, you were right about that crowd. They're in the black market. How do you know? Well, Baker's been taking a bit of notice of me, and tonight he put it quite plainly that I could join the gang. Well, go on. Well, after the police left, Tony had lots of drinks, and she and Baker had a row. She told him he wasn't as good a man as Dave Robinson. What? And then he went as white as a sheet and slapped her face. And she ran out of the place. But the look he gave her was... was frightening. You know, things are beginning to add up. He slapped her face when she mentioned Dave. That means there must be some tie between Dave and Baker. Look, honey, when you go there tomorrow, keep your ears and eyes open. Find out everything you can. Okay, Ted. But don't you go get him mixed up in it, will you? Me? I'm just going to sit at home and read all about it in the papers. <laughs> for outside the palace. They're not to be disturbed. Will you leave it with me? Thanks. Good night. Good night. It's your liability, you know, Paul. Sid's taking her down to the farm after we've done the job. Oh. Thank you. Now, this Ridley and Masterman affair. You get there at 11 o'clock sharp. If there happens to be a cop there, well, the boys can deal with it. 
Five minutes later, we could locate the trucks. They'll come in, one behind the other, to the goods entrance where the gates will be ready to open. I've had the firm's name painted on the trucks. Well, nobody's going to query Ridley and Masterman's own trucks leaving the shop after we've got the stuff. I like that. Nice touch. <laughs> I'd better go down and see if everything's okay below. We don't want any snoopers around tonight. I've had a pretty good checkup. Nobody's talking. The police haven't got any further, and even your taxi driver pal doesn't seem to be around lately. Oh, I think that little affair is blowing over nicely. It's Eleven o'clock. This should be easy. Right. I think he's around somewhere. Hold on, I'll find out. Ted! Ted Peters! Hello? Hold! Okay, coming. Just coming, miss. Thanks, Bob. Hello? Oh, hello, sweet. They're what? Are they? I didn't hear everything, but there's something doing. It's at Ridley and Masterman's. You know, that big store in Oxford Street. They're timing it for 11, and Baker's going to be there. Well, where's Tony? She's what? Not there. Well, where is she then? Well, they're taking her out of town to some farm. Well, well, that proves she knows something, and they're trying to get her out of the way to stop her talking. I'm going to ring Inspector Carter and put him onto it. But, Ted, I know you're going there yourself. You mustn't. I'll just go and look, I promise. If there's anything that looks suspicious, I'll phone Inspector Carter. Better deal? Oh, I suppose so, but do take care. Okay. See you later, darling. Bless you. Bye. Oh, I'm just going out for a minute. I'll be back later. Where's Tony? She's at home, feeling a bit sorry for herself. What she needs is a holiday. Why don't you give her one? It's just what I'm going to do. Nearly packed. I'll be ready by the time you get round. Be over for you in a minute, Ducky. The sooner the better for me. Thanks a lot, Sid. What do you want? Sorry to butt in like this, but we need your help. This isn't one of my public spirited nights. Good day. I'm busy. Going away? I don't usually pack a suitcase to stay at home. No, they don't for Holloway either. What do you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. 
I told you all I knew the other night. I've nothing more to add. You told it so well that my chief has a violent desire to hear it for himself. I'm not going, and that's final. Really? Now, you come along with me, and I'll tell you some funny stories. Mm, I bet you could. <laughs> and that's all I know. Thank you, Miss Masters. You've told me exactly the same story as you told Sergeant Murray. But something new has turned up. Last night, you quarreled with Mr. Baker. I've been drinking. Yes, but during that quarrel, you mentioned the name of Dave Robinson, and Baker slapped your face. Can you explain that? I, I told you I, I'd been drinking. That's not the true explanation. But take your time and think it out. We've got all night before us, and there won't be any drinking. Peters, isn't it? What brings you here? Oh, hello, Inspector. Then it was a straight tip. I've got Is there anything doing? Oh, plenty. My men have just gone in. The trucks are in there. We should be making a pinch at any moment. Want to come in and see the fun? Yeah, sure. I'd like to get a crack of that chap Baker. <laughs> you might even have a chance to do that. Come on. <laughs> what beats me is how you got onto this. Who gave you the tip off? Well, it was Joy. I told Miss Baker Carter she was working at the Pally. Well, well, Joy. Here, yeah, she's my fiancée. You'll have to meet her sometime. Oh, I should look forward to it. Keep going and don't try anything. Looks as if I've been a bit of a mug again, doesn't it? How did you get onto this? You'd be surprised. He'd just been good enough to tell me. His girlfriend gave him the tip off. Girlfriend? Your latest weakness. Joy, the demure little dance hostess. I'm going straight back to take care of her. You look after Peters. It should be right up your street. Yes, right up my street. We'll leave him here for the cops. Don't worry, G. He won't talk. You've got to work fast, Paul. I'm going back to Marsh Road. See you there. Okay, move. Get that stuff loaded up, boys. Hurry. Fox and come and me. Get going, Jim. Start up, 
locks are loaded. Should I help you tie him up? No. You clear off. I can handle it. Okay, first, get going. Thing back, Miss Masters. You're wasting your time. You think so? You know, I've got an idea if you try. Inspector Carter here. Who? Tip Peters. Yes, Peters. You what? Yes. Where? Right, I'll see to it. There's been a job down at Ridley and Masterman's Oxford Street. That's Peter's phoning from the store. He's laid Baker out. He's now on his way to the Camelwood Palais. Oh, well, that'll be two cars. Yes, ten to the details, will you? I suppose you want to come, sir. I just hate to miss it. <laughs> you heard that? We've got Baker. It won't be long before we've got the rest of the gang. Now, if you want to help yourself, the best thing you can do is talk, and talk quickly. Okay. Yes, okay. Right, thank you, sir. HM3 from M257, message number 107, Ridley and Masterman, shop premises, number 907, Oxford Street, broken into. Pick up Paul Baker. HM2 from M257. Message number 925. Proceed to Palais de Danse, Marsh Road. Pick up Mr. E.J. Gregory, manager. Johnny, send Joy Good all up here at once. Then get your coat on and come up as well. Car ready? Yes, sir. Good. Have it brought round to the side door before you come up. We're in a hurry. Come in. Oh, hello, Joy. You sent for me? Yes. We're going on a little trip. I'm sure you're not going to be silly enough to raise any objection. A little object lesson in minding one's own business. The trouble is, I don't think you can possibly be allowed to profit by it. By this time, young Mr. Peters has already received his lesson from Mr. Baker. Where's Ted? What have you done to him? A rough guess. I should think he's well on his way to meeting his friend Dave Robinson. I wouldn't take it too much to heart. You have worries enough of your own. Nothing to the worries you've got coming. If you hurt Ted, I... Keep calm. Already, Gov. Take her down to the car. Is she? Yes, a narc. Well, where would have thought that? Now, lively, Joy. 
I'm always afraid these firearms will go off in me end. What are you laughing at? Oh, sorry, sir. I said I'd laugh like a dream if that boy was right. Well, don't. No. for breaking and entering these premises. Anything you say may be used in evidence. Come along now. I told you to keep out of this. But I'm not sorry you didn't. I think I'd better get a home, Inspector. Yeah, it's a good idea. See to it, will you? Yeah, Williams. Get young Sherlock Holmes a taxi. Very good, sir. Okay. Your poor face. Oh, you never know. It may improve it. Taxi! 